My name is Justin, and I am here to show you how to use the Chicago Public Library Mad Skills Sewing Kit, brought to you by Team Services. So, in your sewing kit, it's going to come with an iron and an ironing pad. It's going to come with a box of bobbins, spools of thread, all different fun colors, scraps of fabric, and of course, your sewing machine. Now, as a side note, your sewing machine is going to come in this white box. And it's important when you're lifting it, don't just lift it from this handle, because sometimes it's not fully latched. So when you're carrying it, make sure both sides are latched, and you're carrying one hand from this handle and one hand from underneath. In your white sewing machine box, you're going to have a base extension to the sewing machine with measurement markings. The sewing machine itself, if you notice on this side, there's a handle, so you can lift it up one side from the handle and the other hand, of course, underneath it. You're going to have a black power cord for the sewing machine. And then this is going to be your foot pedal, which will attach into the sewing machine and allow you to operate the needle. Now to attach the base extension, I'm going to show you the other side of the machine. We have this thing here, which contains some extra sewing materials. You'll just slide it out like that. Take the base extension, it has these feet. You'll want to extend all of the feet, and then it will slide in just like this. You'll hear a little click, and then we can rotate our sewing machine back around. This plug will attach in over here. See, there's a little section there. And then your foot pedal will just go down on the ground and then your power cord, there is a section on the side right next to the power switch. And you'll just plug this in here and attach this to an outlet. Now you have set up your sewing machine. Probably before you even started, you knew maybe what you were gonna sew or what fabric you wanted. I'm gonna be using this fabric, I love this. And then what we're gonna wanna do is find the threads we're gonna use. Maybe you wanna use contrasting colors, complementary colors, I'm going to use some contrasting ones so you can better see what I'm doing. Before we actually go into the main thread from the spool, we are going to want to wind a bobbin. Now I'm going to pick the color of what I want this bobbin to be. Let's say, let's do this red one. I like this red one. Now that I've selected my spool of thread, a lot of times the thread is going to be tucked into the top of the spool. It actually pops off, so you just reach in there, pop it up, take that thread out, that's just to stop it from unraveling, pop it back in. Then we are going to want to put it on the spool pin, so the spool pin is tucked here. Just take it out, and it'll just drop open. You don't need to press down or anything, just let it sit there. We will put our spool of thread onto the spool pin. We'll take this thing off. I kind of like to think of it as a hat or a cap. You just slide it on like that, and that'll stop your spool from falling off the pin. Then we will take our thread. It will just keep unwinding. The first step, the steps are actually written on the machine, but they're not always the most intuitive, so that's why I'm going to go over it with you. We're going to put it through the hook here. You'll hear a little plink. Then, as this is saying, we're going to wrap it underneath and around here like that. This thing kind of looks like a seven. We're going to go behind the seven to then go in front of it and go counterclockwise around this loop. So going behind the seven to go in front of it and wrapping around counterclockwise. And you'll want to pull it in taut because that'll help keep tension. Now we're ready to start wrapping it around this bobbin. When you look at your bobbin, it has, it's double-sided and it has two notches on each side. It has a horizontal notch and a circular notch. Your thread is going to go through the circular notch only on the top side. You don't want to go from top to bottom. Just put it, thread it through the top side. It can sometimes be a little tricky. Oh, we got it on the first try. Yay. If you need to, sometimes you can wet it a little bit or snip it at an angle with some scissors. Anyways, now that we have this there, we're going to use the bottom horizontal side. We're going to put it on here, and you notice this little metal part will fit very nicely into that horizontal part. So we'll line it up and pop it down. Now we're going to spin the bobbin around so that the top horizontal part clicks in. Of course you need to turn your machine on. 
you saw that light appeared. That's how we know it's on. Now, if I were to just press the foot pedal now, it would start sewing. I need to push this over. You'll hear that click, and that is telling it to thread the bobbin instead of sewing. And the way I thread it, I have a little bit of tension here. As you can see, my string's about two to three inches, which is perfect. Hold it up to create some tension. I'm gonna very lightly press the pedal. As you can see, it started winding it a bit. Then I can go snip my thread. I don't even need to hold anymore. I can just press this foot pedal and it'll keep winding it. Once we've wound up our bobbin enough, I'm gonna just snip it free on both sides, pop my bobbin back over, take it off, and then I'm gonna pull the thread out in the same way it had been threading so we don't get any catches or snags or anything like that. And now we have a bobbin and we're ready to start threading this thing to sew. Now that we have got our bobbin all threaded, we've got to put it into the machine. So there's a little latch here. You're going to pull it like this. That'll cause it to pop up. Just slip it out. Now you put your bobbin in. You want to make sure the string is going counterclockwise, as it shows you here. So we'll put the bobbin, bobbin in this way. And instead of going around like this, which would be clockwise, we're going to go around this way. Slip it through this hole there. And then, keep threading it around, all the way around, going in all those grooves. It's groovy. And then we'll slip it out here. There's a little bit of a, um, a knife there, so that'll cut our thread for us. Put our bobbin case back on. Now we're ready to thread the actual needle. Right, so now we have got what our main thread is going to be. Again, the thread is tucked into the top, so we're just going to pop that, unwind it, put it back onto our friend, the spool pin. Let that dangle down, put on our fun little cap. Because if we're sewing, we got to have fashion. Now, this is, it starts out very similarly to the, uh, original diagram, so we're going to again put it through this hook here. And then, instead of going down that way, we're going to go down. So we put it through here. And keeping that tension, we drop it all the way down this way. As you can see, it says now we'll go the other direction, so we're going to flip it, rotate it down there all the way up here, and you'll notice in here there's a silver hook. You want to make sure that the thread goes all the way behind so it can go around this hook. That'll help your tension. Then we'll be dropping it straight down this way, as is indicated by the number five. So now we have dropped this thread down here. We need to thread it into the needle. Now unfortunately, right now, the needle is all the way down into the machine. So we're going to have to turn the dial on the side to raise it. Additionally, we're going to also want to lift up this pressure foot, which we can do with this thing right here. Lifting that up. Now we have our space to thread it. So we're going to first want to put our thread through here, going from right to left. So we will go in like this it is now in and you can you can feel when it goes in we have to thread the needle it's a little counterintuitive but actually the whole the eye of the needle is all the way at the bottom here so i'm going to thread my needle it's going to sometimes take a an attempt or two i think we're at attempt 5 now but 5 worked so you know And then, so we've threaded our needle. And then what, what we're going to want to do is thread it through the left groove of the presser foot here. So you're just picking it up a little bit, dropping it down into there, and then pulling your string to the back. So we have a ton of fun stitches, nearly 70 different stitches, and you can adjust them by pressing this here, this will adjust the ones column, and then you can do this 
to adjust the tens column. There's also this number up here. It's a little easier to see on the basic one. You see this 2.5. That's the length of each stitch. So you can increase how long each stitch is or decrease it. I'd recommend for a beginner around three. And we'll go down to this one. Now it's time to get to the fun part, sewing our pattern together. You always want to get in the habit of sewing what's called right sides together. So you're going to take your two nice sides, put them on top of each other so that you're doing your sewing on the backs of the fabrics. And that way, when you unfold it, the seams will be more hidden. So we got this. We're going to put it under our pressure foot. It's time to start sewing. First, we will drop this pressure foot. That's going to help keep our pieces together so they're not wiggling side to side. I'm also going to keep stabilizing two a little bit with my fingers. To get this to start sewing, I'm going to press very lightly on the pedal. I'm just going to start off with about four or five stitches. So that's about four or five. Then what I want to do is press this. This will make it sew backwards so that it doesn't come undone. I don't even have to press the pedal while doing this. I just press the button and it very slowly does it backwards for about three or four. And then now we are ready to sew down the line. The harder you press, the faster it'll go. I'm not actually feeding it through with my fingers. The machine automatically is. I'm just helping stabilize it. Now we've reached the end of our line, mostly. We're gonna once again wanna do that backwards thing just to seal it in there. Then we'll lift the pressure foot. We'll raise our needle to the top and it is now available to pull this backwards towards the back. There's a little bit of a thread cutter. Oopsies, sometimes we miss. And now we have our pieces stitched together and they unfold very nicely like that, hiding the seam. The last part of your sewing certification is learning how to seam rip. Because you know what? It's art. Mistakes happen. One of the common mistakes is putting your seam ripper in and then lifting up. The sharp part is actually all the way in the back, so you just want to slide it all the way through. Let me just pick up this thread. So instead of lifting up, which could break the seam ripper, I'm just going to go boop like that to the side. Do that a few times. It's actually very relaxing sometimes doing so. Then it has loosened up our threads so we can pull them out, like so. Do I have like yarn like dangling beside me? Or is that too weird? Uh, nah. We're already packed. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, we're rolling. Okay.